y'all, Peacock here, and welcome to another episode of Peacock Plates. Today we are doing the meal for Little Nightmares. We had a spoopy time, let's make a spoopy meal. So today for Little Nightmares, we are doing a turmeric roasted salmon with garlic rice, beets, uh, with their greens as well, a uh, plum wine cocktail, and a plain cheesecake with a blueberry sauce. We are gonna start first with the salmon, more specifically the marinade for the salmon. So for the marinade, we're gonna start with a quarter of a cup of lemon juice. To that, we're gonna add a fourth of a teaspoon of turmeric. We are also going to add a half a teaspoon of honey, and then we're going to add a pinch of pepper into that. I'm then taking a salmon filet and I'm going to cut two portions from that. I did end up with an extra third portion that was a little oddly shaped just because it was the end of the filet. Um, I did make an extra bit of marinade for that one separately and I cooked that alongside these two. Once you've portioned out two pieces of salmon, you're going to put those into a Ziploc bag along with your marinade. We're gonna let this sit for at least an hour. So next up, we're going to work on the cocktail for this meal. Uh, first, I took some strawberries, um, just like a handful of them, and I cut them into large portions, and I sprinkled a little bit of sugar over them, and then I let them just sit like that um, for like 10, 15 minutes, and then I put them into the bottom of my glass that I was gonna be using. If you wanted, you could also muddle these a little bit with like the back of a spoon, or if you have an actual muddler like you use for cocktail mixing, um, you could do that if you want a little bit of extra strawberry juice in there and their flavor. I just left mine whole for appearance's sake. And to that, we are going to add some plum wine. and then some sort of dark red soda. Uh, I think that at the time I had uh, one of those Izzy's raspberry sodas, uh, but pretty much any dark red soda, if you have a preference for like a cherry soda or something like that, go for it. And that's it guys. It's a pretty simple one this time around. Uh, it's mostly just plum wine. And now we're gonna work on portioning out and cutting up the beets. Uh, for this one, I am going to be cooking both the beets, their stems, and their greens. So we're going to start first by just kind of roughly separating the beet root from the greens and stems. Once we have those just kind of basically separated, I'm going through and I'm just removing the top of the beet uh, just to get rid of that kind of weird portion where the stems start coming out of it. And then I'm just going through and quartering the beets. On a couple of the beets, I did choose to quarter them in such a way that I actually left the beet tails on. Uh, I just thought it would look kind of rat-like, and since we did end up eating a rat in the game, I thought it would be very appropriate if we had some little rat tails in there. And now that I've got kind of all the beet roots roughly portioned out, I did go back through and I cut those quarters in half again, just to make them more bite size. And now that we have the beet roots taken care of, we're just gonna be going through and trimming up the stems a bit. Uh, I'm just cutting the beet greens off the top of the stem and then going through and I'm cutting the stems themselves into kind of one inch pieces. And once you have the beet root and the stems cut up, you're gonna go through and you're also going to dice up the leaves into kind of bite-sized portions as well. And once you have everything all trimmed up and ready to go, you're going to start with putting the beet root pieces into some boiling water. Just the beet root pieces right now. Um, they're gonna take a lot longer to cook than say the stems or the leaves are. Uh, I believe I ended up cooking mine for about 10 minutes. Uh, you're gonna wanna test them with a fork though because it's gonna depend on how big of a batch you're doing at once um, as well as how big of pieces you cut yours into. 
Pretty much you just want the fork to have just a bit of resistance when going into the beetroot. And once those reach about that consistency, you're going to add the beet stem. And once the stems are starting to soften, we're gonna toss those leaves in last. Um, they're gonna cook really quickly. So uh, probably just a minute after that, we're actually gonna be taking this off the heat and draining it into a colander. And once the beets are cooked and drained, we're going to put them back into the same pot we cooked them in. And to that, we are going to add a pat of butter and a splash of mirin and a splash of rice wine. Uh, if you really like yours vinegary like I do, it's gonna be a pretty big splash, maybe not so much a splash as like a quarter of a cup of um, the vinegar. And don't forget to add salt and pepper as well. Uh, once you've got all that in there, just give it a good stir until the butter has melted. And that's it for our beets. Now it's on to our garlic rice. And I decided to do a garlic rice because I did want something kind of white in there like the uh, gnomes, but mostly I wanted a garlic rice because I figured it would be kind of pungent. Like I imagine the ship probably has a pretty distinct odor at this point. So for this recipe, I actually used elephant garlic. Um, it's just gonna be larger cloves than your typical garlic. It's also gonna be a lot more mild and kind of sweet than your usual garlic. If you're able to find that, great, use it. Uh, but if not, you can use regular garlic for this recipe. You're just gonna end up doing about half the amount compared to the number of cloves of elephant garlic I did. So I took five cloves of the elephant garlic and I just really finely minced that. And then we're also going to be using pearl onions in this recipe as well. Um, ideally six of them. For some of the larger pearl onions, I did mince them, uh, but otherwise if they were small enough, I just left them whole. We're going to be cooking them kind of in the stock we're using for the rice for a while. So even though they're whole, they will get very soft. Once you have the onions and the garlic ready to go, in a medium saucepan, you're going to heat up a tablespoon of olive oil with a tablespoon of butter. So once your butter is melted, you're going to add the garlic as well as the pearl onions to that and cook stirring for about a minute. After that minute, we're gonna add a cup of rice to this and we're just gonna to toast the rice on the um, heat with that garlic and the onions. After that, we are going to add two cups of chicken broth to the rice. We're going to bring that to a boil, and then once it is boiling, we're actually gonna reduce the heat to kind of a medium low and cover that. And we're gonna let it cook for about 20 to 25 minutes. And after that, you're just going to pop the lid off really quick, fluff it with a fork, and then I would put the lid back on it until you're ready to serve it. Alrighty, and now that our salmon has been marinating for an hour, it is time to get it into the oven. Uh, so I'm just putting mine onto a baking tray lined with foil because it's gonna be easier for cleanup later. You don't have to put down the foil, but I would highly recommend it because I mean, we do have honey in this marinade that's gonna get pretty uh, burny in the oven and it's gonna stick to that pan really badly. So when we're ready to go, we're going to put the salmon skin side up into a 400 degree oven and roast that for six minutes. After that, we're going to take the salmon out of the oven, flip it, and we're actually gonna put either lemon or lime slices on top of it and drizzle it with a little bit more honey. In my case, I did also add some extra turmeric um, because I did want it to be very yellow because, I mean, our character is yellow in the game. We had a good old banana girl. I wanted this to be reminiscent of the banana girl. And then we're cooking that for another six minutes. And that would be it, guys. Uh, as long as your salmon is flaky and pulls apart when you uh, test it with a fork, you're good to go, man. You can plate up and eat. I thought the elephant garlic was so good in this rice because there was a strong flavor of garlic, but in that like really mild cooked down sweet sense of when you've stewed garlic for a really long time. And I thought the acidity of those beets from all the rice vinegar went really well with the garlic rice as well. And next up is dessert. And no, this totally isn't an entirely different kitchen. Not at all. So like I said before, this is going to be a plain cheesecake with blueberry sauce. Um, it is going to have, in this case, a chocolate cookie crust though, instead of your usual graham cracker crust. I did actually pre-buy my crust. I was just really crunched for time. Uh, I couldn't make it from scratch. 
So I just bought my gluten-free, dairy-free cookie crust to make my life a little easier, okay? Sometimes I just need things to be easy, and this is one of those times. So we are going to start with our blueberry sauce. Alrighty, so in a medium saucepan, we're gonna do two cups of blueberries with a teaspoon of cornstarch, an eighth a cup of water, half a tablespoon of lemon juice, and one tablespoon of sugar. We're gonna put that on the stove on medium heat and cook until it starts to kind of bubble and boil and those blueberries just start to burst. And that is your blueberry sauce, guys. It's pretty much just letting it cool before you put it on something at this point. So this is a recipe I've been messing around with and I think actually turns out really well. It does make a really light and fluffy cheesecake. Well, cheesecake. So for this recipe, I use one container of the Tofuti brand whipped um, cream cheese substitute. You could also just do a regular container of whipped cream cheese. I don't see why that wouldn't work. And then to our whipped dairy-free cream cheese product, we're going to add uh, three-fourths a cup of sour cream, or in this case, again, it's a dairy-free sour cream substitute that's soy-based. And we're also going to follow that with three-fourths a cup of sugar. And lastly, three whole eggs. We're gonna give that a good mix and then pour it into our pre-made crust. Um, in this case, usually this recipe I use in a springform pan with a crust I have made from scratch, uh, and it works out perfectly fine. It's just the right amount. Uh, in this case, I did end up with a lot of extra batter. So I was trying to use as much of it as possible, and I did overfill this. Shame on me. It ends up looking kind of funky because I way overfilled it later when it bakes. But, you know, learn from our mistakes. It still tasted fine. It just wasn't that appealing for the camera, unfortunately. And to finish things off, we're putting that into a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half. And when you take it out of the oven, you want it to have just a little bit of wobble to it, um, which is actually also the reason why I went with the cheesecake because I was thinking of all of our wobbly wobbly guests at the buffet on the cruise ship of death. I actually think this cheesecake is better warm uh, because when it's fresh out of the oven, uh, it still has that really light airy kind of souffle texture almost. So I did cut into this a bit early. Uh, it was still kind of on the loose side because it was still so warm, but I wanted a slice, damn it. It was late, I wanted some of that cheesecake. And then it's just a matter of throwing some blueberry sauce on there, guys, and enjoying. And that is it guys, that's our whole meal for Little Nightmares. Um, I probably will do a second meal later on if more DLC comes out and I'll just do a follow up because I had a lot of ideas for this actually. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to narrow my focus down to the uh, few basic components for this meal. As always, I would love to hear your feedback if you try any of these recipes, um, especially the dairy-free cheesecake one, because it is still something I'm experimenting really heavily with, trying to get like that perfect light fluffy texture, but without the dairy part of things or the gluten for the crust, you know? Or if you have any dairy-free cheesecake recipes that you're really partial to, I'd love to hear them as well. Uh, I have been experimenting around with it a lot lately because I do really miss having cheesecake. Um, I know some people have commented on the lighting for this part of my video where I'm just talking to the camera and doing the voiceover stuff for the recipes. Uh, I know the lighting is really terrible right now. I know uh, this whole situation not doing any favors for me, not doing any favors for you as far as the visual appeal. Uh, so I am working on that. I have more lights that are on their way. Mostly I'm just waiting until after I move to get things really set up how I want them and just so for now, uh, unfortunately, it is just like my one singular light and then whatever overhead lighting I've got going on in my room. I know it sucks. I'm sorry. Bear with me just a little longer. Then I'll have my full lighting set up and everything all ready to go. And it'll just look a lot better. You'll have a better time. I'll have a better time. Everybody will have a better time. So uh, I'll do the really awkward close that I always do of saying I'm blabbering on and on and not really knowing how to close this out. And yeah, I should just end it here. 
I will see you peeps later. Bye.